Good morning and welcome to Health Talk here on AM 1270 and 96.5 FM KXBX here today with the ghost of Bill because he's uh, living it up in Hawaii today <laughs> on a on a much needed vacation after a, a, a solid <laughs> fall <laughs> into the pool and a broken leg and uh, anything else you can imagine last year he's probably uh, enjoying himself in Hawaii as we speak. So we're going to ask that you don't bring uh, any calls to the uh, program today. Save them for next week. But we do have Bill in the studio, so we will do a pre-recorded one. This is it for uh, for us today, and we will be playing this while he's in Hawaii. So, hey, how's Hawaii? Uh, great, Paul. <laughs> 87 <laughs> degrees uh, surfing, uh, <laughs> which I which I don't even do. Uh, I But I did have... Uh, I uh, went to see my surgeon, and he did say that I was cleared to snorkel. Wow. Great. Uh, I mean, the turnaround is incredible on you. Well, I, you know, this morning I got up, and, uh, you know, the, I use a cane just in case. And when I first get up, I my leg kind of turns in, and it supports me. And then I'm walking okay. I had physical wow. therapy um, last week uh, twice, and uh, I'll have it. Uh, I'll, I'll do these uh, exercises in Hawaii that I'm yeah. supposed to be doing. And he said as long as... Somebody can get me in and out of the water that uh, snorkeling with fins, he said, because that will work the leg a lot better, uh, will do fine. I still am in an, uh, a huge amount of pain, but uh, only at the end of the day you wow, know, where it's, it's really bad. So, um, are you, are, are, are people have called you Steve Austin, the, the you know, million dollar man? That, no, nobody's, <laughs> nobody's <laughs> called you that no. yet. They uh, they may when I uh, <laughs> after uh, while the show is being played I will have already gone through um, the TSA checkpoint with a <laughs> if you get through with a new wow. metal metal plate in my knee <laughs> so I may or may not uh, make it to Hawaii but I uh, oh boy I'll um, I, and then I my driver's license disappeared in the midst of all this so I went to try oh, to no. get my driver's license and um, you know the place is full mm-hmm. over there so. Um, uh, they said we'll make an appointment. So I yeah, made, made an appointment is for February fifth yeah. or tenth. I hope I wrote it down because yeah. I'll never remember. Mm. But um, you could travel on a passport though, right? Yeah, and I, I hope I can rent a car on my uh, oh, on my, a yeah. copy of my driver's license because yeah. hmm. there was no way I could <clears throat> get in to get the the new license. Mm-hmm. And as long as it has an expiration date on there that's 2018 or something, the way I'm going, I may not even be driving by then. <laughs> so. <laughs> Anyway, it's uh, it's good to be here, and we're going to be talking um, a lot about uh, uh, things in healthcare. Some about Alzheimer's disease, and uh, some about the drug keepers that keep uh, raising their prices. And we're going to spend uh, quite a bit of time on sleep medication. <clears throat> and the reason we are is, and our, our number's uh, not going to give you our number because you can't call it in because I'm in Hawaii. Um, but uh, the reason we're talking about sleeping pills so much is that there is um, quite a controversy going on on whether to use them or not and the morning after effect, and we really thought we got over that uh, when we got away from the uh, diazepams and um, florazepam and diazepam and um, the the old uh, Dalmain and Restoril, and those things accumulated in your system, and we came out with newer third generations and second generations of sleeping medications other than the antihistamines that we had. And we thought those were a, a, a great uh, thing to be taking, and uh, they didn't accumulate in your system as much. And that uh, <clears throat> probably uh, a new trend was coming, and they were non-addicting. Well, uh they they are addicting or habit forming just like any medication and we've had some bizarre uh situations with uh people that were driving while drugged and and here's a little example and I can name you people personally that were in this situation before uh but this gentleman was um working the evening shift at a coal mine in Illinois and he was only 34 years old. He took the sleeping pill, Ambien, although he had to drive to a doctor's appointment early the next morning. Um, and at some point, he also took Benadryl, uh, which is an antihistamine for uh, an OTC allergy, and at some time, uh, an anxiety drug, and or it could have been a glass of wine at the same time. Uh, around 9.30 the next morning, now, 
a substantial amount of time had taken place. He uh, was going to his doctor's appointment, and he drove into a group of highway workers, killing one and injuring three. Um, the Jeter's father said that um, the, the widow sent my son a family picture saying Michael, uh, that Michael put it on his refrigerator to mind him, uh, remind him what he had done. Um, Brian Moore, who was hit by Jeter, is sympathetic. I believe he didn't realize that combining those pills was like putting a chemical bomb together in his stomach. Um, and, of course, he was arrested for an aggravated DUI and sentenced to nine years in prison. Uh, but if you're driving erratically because you've taken medication, you can get arrested even if you don't harm anyone. Uh, if after checking for dilated pupils and poor coordination and other signs a police officer suspects you're impaired um, because of a drug you're taking, he can charge you with DUI and arrange for a blood test. In this situation and in many situations, that blood test shows no alcohol. What it does show is an innocent attempt to take a sleeping medication and an allergy medication and an anxiety medication, which many people take. And we put reminders on your prescriptions when you get Ambien or Zipolabend and that <clears throat> not to drink alcohol and not drive while taking this medication or be, be aware that bizarre behavior can happen. And normally we don't pay any attention to that. We mention that when we dispense the medication but uh, here's three or four more people. One took Ambien a few years ago, and um, it uh, made her go crazy. I woke up the next morning with various uh, empty food containers, uh, once even three pounds of potato salad next to my bed that I'd eaten. Another one said I got on an Ambien uh, and rotating it with Benadryl, Valium, and melatonin, which is over-the-counter, uh, one week's when my schedule is light, I try to get by with nothing, but by the third night I'm crying for sleep, so I relapse into the pills. Uh, another gentleman said my doctor refused to give me a prescription, so I took over-the-counter sleep aid every night along with melatonin. Sometimes I woke up groggy, but it's better than living in a continuous state of exhaustion. Uh, another lady, I said I took Ambien for three days. I found a, uh, a mile away from, I was found a mile away from my home by police officers after neighbors spotted me. I was sleepwalking, extremely scary. Um, the last gentleman said I had a very sh bad short-term memory loss after taking Ambien. I couldn't remember what I had for lunch the day before. I would drive to work and not remember how I got there. There's about 34 million Americans that reach for sleeping remedy pills and, uh, and the over-the-counter things, such as melatonin. I, I'm not trying to bad um, advertise Ambien because I think it's a terrific sleeping medication. But number one, the fact that it wasn't addicting or isn't addicting, whether you call it addiction or dependency, is a red flag. Number two, the crazy behavior that you may get from taking it is a red flag. Uh, I have taken it uh, uh, right after my surgeries, and uh, I, I took a half of an Ambien after this last surgery, um, and I had absolutely no problem with it. But the next thing is it metabolizes much different in females than males. So where uh, a male may tolerate 10 milligrams at bedtime as needed for sleep, um, a female would be 5 milligrams. And we've been overdosing females for some time uh, because we weren't aware of that. Remember, most studies uh, that have been done have been males. And, um, and just until the last 20 years have we really got into using females a lot for sleep deprivation or any other kind of um, of uh, medication that we're testing to bring on the market. You ever take sleeping pills, Paul? I do not. You ever take an antihistamine or? Uh, yeah, well, I've taken antihistamines because I do get stuffed up sometimes. But, but is it the uh, is it like Benadryl or chlorotrimeton or is it the new ones like? Uh, no, Benadryl. Yeah. It was Ben, which you know it's supposed to make you drowsy. Um, in fact, I when I went in and. Uh, was sick recently and and uh, had complained that I was not sleeping well and was up a lot. And they gave me Benadryl and, and told me to take it before bed, but um, I don't take any any sleep aids. Like 
you know. Does the Benadryl help you? I never really took it. I mean, I did a couple times. It's not something I've taken enough to really focus on. Well, and you have sleep apnea. I do have sleep apnea, yeah. So uh, you could see where easily, if it was effective, you could get into a habit of, I mean, it says take one at bedtime as needed uh, for the Ambien and the melatonin, but... um, but if you get satisfaction after using it for two or three days, you're going to like the fact that you got a full nights full of sleep, and it would be hard to give that up. Um, but uh, melatonin, which works a little bit differently, uh, it's in fact a hormone that's secreted by uh, the brain's pineal or the, the brain's pineal gland, and it sets the, bo- the body's circadian rhythm. That's your 24-hour clock. Uh, that helps control when you fall asleep and when you wake up. Uh, Traces can be found in uh, small doses in barley and rice and tomatoes and walnuts, uh, which is why the Food and Drug Administration allows a synthetic version to be sold over the counter. Here in, uh, in the UK, in Britain, you can only get melatonin through a doctor. So uh, it can... Uh, ease your sleep problems caused by shift work, especially if you're in law enforcement or if you're in factory workers and you're uh, switching shifts all the time or jet lag. Uh, but overall, people, tell, people that take uh, the drug uh, fall asleep only seven minutes faster and sleep eight minutes longer on average. Um, this was analysis done back in 2000, 2013. We're, we're reaching uh, past two years now, going into three years. So Um, The supplement has some risks, too. Now, remember, it's melatonin. You can buy it over the counter, 2 and 5 milligram. About 20% of the users in the survey reported next-day grogginess. Uh, A council for responsible nutrition and supplement uh, trade group says to use caution before driving the next day. It can also undermine blood pressure and diabetes. Uh, Once more, if they, you have to remember with over-the-counter medications. They aren't regulated carefully, so what's on the label may not be what's in that pill. Uh, If you want to try it, look for products with USP verified mark, which has been vetted by the nonprofit uh, USP Pharmacopeia, and stick with low doses. Um, The the tendency is if we a little bit works, then we want to take a lot more. And if that does, if that works better and we get to taking it and we build up a tolerance, we want to take a lot more. So uh, it ends up being a, um, a vicious cycle of uh, repeating uh, the use, just like we have been talking about in opiates. So <clears throat> it's no longer uh, the first line treatment when people go in and tell their doctors that... Um, they're having trouble sleeping. There's limited benefits and substantial risks of sleeping pills. Um, Sleep drugs should be used with great caution. The American Academy of Sleep Medicine no longer recommends them as a first choice treatment for chronic insomnia, Um, opting instead to go for cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, In general, sleeping pills should be reserved for short-term insomnia. Uh, such as that caused by jet lag or anxiety after the death of a family member or job loss. Uh, For those limited situation, uh, we recommend following the precautions which apply to prescription and over-the-counter sleep drugs. Uh, Number one, tell your doctor about all the medicines you're taking. Frequent weaning don't include uh, the -the over-the-counter things, and in this case, Benadryl. And in this gentleman's um, failure to... um, see the highway worker he ended up with nine years in prison because uh, he was under the influence Um, and no alcohol Uh, many common drugs such as certain antibiotics and antidepressants can interact dangerously with sleep drugs so be aware of that Um, and take the drugs only if you have seven or eight hours uh, to sleep most of the time uh, when I go to bed I've got five or six hours left Um, even if you've had that much sleep don't drive if you feel drowsy Uh, Don't take an extra dose if you wake up in the middle of the night. Ambien now has a CR, which is a continuous release, which is a two-stage Ambien that will release uh, immediately part of it, and then three or four hours into it will release the other half to keep you asleep. Um, Never mix the sleeping pills with alcohol, recreational drugs, or other sleep drugs, and and, and what I'm going to tell you is something I've told you before. You may get by with it 100 times, maybe 200 times. But one of these times, 
the alcohol and the recreational drugs and the sleep drugs and the supplements are all going to kick in at the same time. And that's one of the things we have with the entertainment business, with, uh, with athletes that have um, too much money and can get stuff, whether it's a prescription is required or not, and they came buying all these things with illegal substances, and many times they don't make it. And start with the lowest recommended dose, especially until you know how the drug affects you. Um, I had a lady the other day that went on uh, a medication by the physician that was an antidepressant and uh, has long been used because it's the most sedative of all the drugs used for anxiety or depression, and it's used a lot for sleep at bedtime without being... Uh, a benzodiazepine, and uh, she was completely paralyzed. She uh, couldn't move. Um, the same thing has happened with people with Ambien, but don't just assume that, that you're going to have to use the amount that was prescribed uh, to get through these sleeping pills. Sometimes if you can break it in half, uh, you're better off. Some are capsules that you can't break in half, but be aware when you take these for the first time that it could have an unusual effect. Uh, sleeplessness is complicated, but it hasn't stopped millions of people from uh, craving a simple chemical uh, solution to ease the misery of insufficient sleep. So, um, and as we age, it becomes more difficult to get REM sleep, and uh, and plus. You're in a lot more pain. When you go to sleep at 70 years old instead of going to sleep at 20 years old, you definitely uh, have some aches and pains that you hope you can go to sleep and those will disappear during the time that you're uh, trying to get some rest. Um, one of the drugs, the drug that I just talked about, is trazodone, and it's usually prescribed for sleep even though it's approved by the FDA only for depression. Uh, do not take this drug for sleep unless you also suffer from uh, depression. And I couldn't find any place where somebody got the reaction that this individual did, uh, but it's a, uh, a, a dangerous drug if you fall into that category. The benzos, those drugs that um, swarm into the public awareness around the 1960s when Valium was the big deal, part of a class known as benzodiazepines, uh, other ones, such as Lunesta and Dalmain and Restorol, are approved as sleep aids, but they can still breed uh, dependence and trigger side effects, such as confusion and grogginess. And those are the drugs that, over a period of time in the 60s, um, the Valium was be became the housewife's best friend. We were using it for anxiety. We were using it for uh, just having a bad day, and we got a lot of addictions. That's where the Mary Ford... Uh, clinic came from in the desert because, uh, or Betty Ford, uh, Betty became addicted to Valium, and my brother-in-law was her secret service agent and went through the withdrawals with her. Um, then the Z drugs came out, um, and the doctors hoped that these would, um, wouldn't cause the same next-day drowsiness, but the FDA says they're prone to do that and link to rare their, their uh, frightening behavior, such as sleep driving and sleep eating, and the reason they call Ambien the Z drug, Zipolidem is its generic name, and um, it does uh, cause a lot of those things to happen. Belsomra, this is the first in a new class of sleeping drugs uh, to target uh, sleeping. Uh, Erexin, a brain chemical linked to wakefulness and appetite, but it doesn't seem to work better than any of the older drugs, and it can trigger side effects such as sleep paralysis in which uh, you're awake but unable to move, like we were speaking about for the trazodone. In fact, Merck spent $36 million on TV ads for that drug from August 1st to November 24th last year, in 2015. The second most advertised prescription drug in that time frame, according to iSpot TV. That ad notes that it's the first drug to target orexin, which is a chemical that plays a role in... Um, keeping people awake, but doesn't work much or any better than any other sleep bug. And it's very, very expensive and not covered on many people's insurance that we've seen. And then you start looking at the over-the-counter things, sleep drugs now that you can buy without a prescription. In fact, 
Um, it's easy to take dangerously high doses because of the active ingredients. Uh, diphenhydramine, which is um, uh, Benadryl and doxalamine, aren't only in OTC products, but they're in Somonex and Zequil. They're also nighttime pain relievers such as Advil PM, Tylenol PM, as well as uh, most meds that uh, have Benadryl and cough suppressants in them. Uh, they also are affected. So... Older adults, if you're over 65 and you're in the Beers criteria, as we've talked about before, uh, they are going to be asking either your pharmacist and physician to interfere and get uh, involved with your therapy and try to come up with alternatives to uh, help you get sleep without having uh, uh, a problem with um, uh, being addicted or having a, a problem with sleeping. And I, I don't know if you watch much TV, Paul, but there's a, a My Pillow that's advertised. I've seen on it. Television. I've heard it on the radio too. And um, does it, it work? Well, not really. Yeah. Uh, about a third of the people that uh, took it. I, I just saw the ad the other day, and when I was going through consumers, uh, I saw them talking about it. And it's about sixty bucks, and it runs constantly uh, on TV and radio. Uh, they make some bold claims for what it calls the most comfortable pillow you've ever owned, including an exact custom fit. Uh, you can adjust it to make it fit you because the foam pieces interlock and hold that position without going flat, so you get support where you need it. Uh, consumers bought three of those pillows to test in their labs uh, to test REM sleep, which is that most valuable sleep that you get at the end of the night. And they examined them inside and out. It described itself as having three-piece interlocking fill, but it actually has thousands of torn polyurethane foam mm. pieces in three sizes. They were able to shift the foam pieces around to different positions, and they did seem to stay out and stay put under pressure. Uh, the case is 100% cotton, and it didn't have any noticeable off smells like some pillows can. And then they asked him how it felt, and uh, the tester described it as kind of lumpy but comfortable. We pulled staffers who... Brought my pillow uh, on their own. Most said they bought it to help alleviate a sleep problem such as insomnia, neck pain, or snoring. Uh, half of those staffers said it helped a lot. Uh, 17% um, said it helped a little, and 33% didn't help at all. Only one-third of the group said they would buy it again. Uh, the six-day money-back guarantee names uh, means that you can return it, uh, though you have to pay for shopping and handling on both the original and sending it back. So um, nothing's quite as good as they say it is, and uh, it has a lot to do with more than just your chemical uh, tracking. It has a lot to do with um, what the medication does with you or what kind of a person you are or what other kind of medications you're taking uh, at the same time. Uh, we're going to take a, a break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about Alzheimer's and uh, some of the myths involved with Alzheimer's disease. Happy New Year, everyone. This is Bill Kearney of North Lake Medical Pharmacies. As we enter a new year, we at North Lake Medical Pharmacies can reflect on the last 36 years and see the significant changes that have affected the health care industry, especially the Affordable Health Care Act, and more importantly, you. Even with all the changes, our mission has always been the same, to provide you with the best customer service possible. We want to answer all your questions before you leave our pharmacies. If we don't do this, then our pharmacists are available on the phone to answer those questions. We at North Lake Medical Pharmacies know you have a choice. When you have your prescriptions filled, we feel a great sense of appreciation to you, our customers, for making us your choice when filling your prescriptions. We look forward to serving you in 2016 at both of our pharmacies, at Hill Road next to Sutter Lakeside Hospital, and outside Bruna Shop Smart on Lakeport Boulevard. Just remember, free delivery to Lakeport, Nice, Upper Lake, and Lucerne, and now to Kelseyville, the Rivieras, and Buckingham. In the last decade, more than 400,000 people died on America's roadways. That's one person every 13 minutes. Roadway deaths strike the young or old at any time of the year, at any hour of the day or night. And it doesn't matter whether you drive a car on a highway, ride a motorcycle or bicycle on a country road, or simply take a walk near traffic. Everyone is at risk. Since 1969, members of the American Traffic Safety Services Association have worked diligently to make our nation's roadways safer by providing the majority of roadway safety features, including bright signs and pavement markings, 
guardrails, and crash cushions. These are just some of the roadway devices that save thousands of lives each day. Since most of our roadways were built in the 1950s, there's so much more work that needs to be done to reach the ultimate goal of zero deaths. Safer roads save lives. To learn how you can get involved, visit ATSSA.com. A public service message from the American Traffic Safety Services Association. You, my friend, have connections in the government. 1-800-FED-INFO, the official source for all government information. And like any good connection, there's no telling where it can take you. Why one day you're getting student loan information, next thing you know, you need job hunting tips. So whether you have information to get or ideas to give your government, call 1-800-FED-INFO. Who knows, money-saving tips today could lead to retirement planning tomorrow. Who was your hero when you were a kid? Whether it was Joe DiMaggio or Jackie Robinson. Rosa Parks or Sally Ride. Bogart or Brando. You're just the right age to do something important that you can be remembered for. Even if you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, or beyond, you can register to become an organ and tissue donor. Surprised? You shouldn't be. Today, people of all ages and even with health conditions can sign up to donate the gift of life. And it's so important. Every age, every ethnicity is needed. If we all signed up, imagine the lives we could save. The families we could help. So whether you admire John Wayne or James Dean, Robert Redford or Roberto Clemente, Elvis Presley or Ella Fitzgerald, do something important that could make a real difference and change lives. Get the facts today and register to become an organ donor. Find out how at organdonor.gov or call 1-866-99-DONATE. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Health Resources and Services Administration. Yeah. And we're back. We are back. And we're talking about uh, more about Alzheimer's disease than maybe you want to know. But, you know, I, I found it very interesting to me because some of these things... I didn't know. You always worry about Alzheimer's as you start to age. And some people uh, wonder why more people aren't taking steps to reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease. And the answer to that question isn't really simple. Uh, some of it stems from uh, pervasive societal myths and who's at risk for the disease. And maybe understanding these can help put you... Um, your mind at ease as well as find motivation you need to get off the couch and stock the fridge with produce and sign up for the yoga class. Mm -hmm. I think it'll probably take me a while to sign up for the yoga class, so I thought I'd read this instead. Uh, some of the more common myths that may stand between uh, you and your ability to outsmart um, Alzheimer's disease, and one of the, the myths is if I live long enough, I will get Alzheimer's. And, you know, in a sense, uh, the risk certainly increases, but many people assume that forgetting and lack of mental clarity are normal consequences of aging, but they're, they're really not. The best way to show this is with a story uh, about a remarkable autopsy, and within hours after this 115-year-old uh, Andel Shipper died of cancer, scientists transported the Dutch woman to the university in um, the Netherlands, um, and in the expected uh, autopsy, they found tumors in the stomach, in the liver, the kidneys, in the armpit. But what they didn't find that stunned them, in her brain, they expected to see these tangles, these um, uh, plaque tangles that they get of damaged cells and clusters of plaque on both sides uh, and both signs of Alzheimer's disease. And to their amazement, they found no hardened plaque and a few tangles, her blood vessels were equally free of disease, and when the scientists tediously counted the number of specific type of brain cells in one part of the brain, and then counted again just to be sure, the tally reached higher than 16,000, roughly uh, the number of cells that you would expect to find in a healthy 60-year-old, and this person was 115. Uh, they concluded, in contrast to general belief, the age limits of human cognitive function may extend far beyond the range that's currently enjoyed by most people. So she's no uh, uh, anomaly. We can infer from life's accomplishments that mother, many other people lived into uh, old age with vibrant cognitive health. Uh, those scientists uh, didn't have the opportunity to dissect other brains, although that's the only way we could tell uh, when somebody had Alzheimer's in the past was uh, to do an autopsy. And these tangles and plaques they're talking about is a mass, uh, white mass, that 
starts in the brain, and it gets in the way of the nerve synapses, the endings of the brain, uh, endings of a nerve, and to the brain giving them a message. And the, so the message that the brain receives isn't uh, never never gets there in many of these cases, and that's why they get these episodes of uh, not being able to remember. Uh, Pablo Picasso, who produced a torrent of etchings and paintings in the years just before his death at 92, had no evidence of uh, dementia or Alzheimer's. George Burns, who won an Academy Award at the age of 79, and uh, just two years before his death at 100, uh, he remained witty. When asked the secret of achieving old age, he said, if you live past 100, you got it made. <laughs> so, so he did. So a few people die past that age. Uh, Jimmy Carter, Henry Kissinger, Betty White, and many others have remained sharp-witted as well. Uh, there's another lady, a French lady, that who lived to age uh, 122. She was a neuropsychologist, and um, she was examined four years before her death. They found then uh, the 118-year-old was incredibly sharp-witted. After meeting with uh, several other people over a period of months, they concluded that she had no evidence of senile dementia. So that puts that to rest, that you, if you live long enough, you'll get Alzheimer's. Um, Alzheimer's disease runs in my family, so I'll get it no matter what I do. <clears throat> you know, the genes that we inherit from our parents, and you're probably aware, Paul, of, of things that you have, like your dad or your mom, that mm -hmm. you know are characteristics. Sure. That eventually develop. A lot of people think uh, Alzheimer's disease will eventually develop yeah. if one of your your family had it, and we have learned that they don't predict our future with uh, absolute certainty. Whether we carry the Alzheimer's gene or not, our risk of developing the disease doubles every five years after the age sixty five. And I think that was my biggest um, wake wake up call that. Um, every uh, every five years, I'm going to be uh, the the chance of me increasing is going to increase by fifty percent. Uh, so I've passed my first five years, and I'm getting into my second. Um, the average age uh, for uh, people is eighty five. For someone who's had uh, one copy of the APOE4 gene, which is the the gene that causes the Alzheimer's, however, the risk uh, reaches fifty percent. Uh, earlier if you have that gene by the age 75 and someone with two copies of this gene has a 50 percent chance of developing Alzheimer's by the age 65. Uh, the statistics however are not quite as dire as, as they seem while the APOE4 raises a risk of other genes may be, present, uh, may be presented at a lower risk and second when you do research showing you can outsmart that gene and diminish the likelihood of future cognitive impairment by making lifestyle changes uh, to protect your brain. For example, in one study, uh, there were participants who were fit, who were carriers of that disease, had brain scans comparable to those at a low risk for developing Alzheimer's, whereas sedentary uh, study particip participants who were carriers of the gene experienced a 3% shrinkage uh, because they weren't doing anything actively. In another one, participants who were carriers of that gene were able to postpone the development by almost a decade if they spent their adult lives immersed in intellectually enriching activities. Uh, it's important to understand, though, that you can't out, outsmart all Alzheimer's disease. Uh, several years ago, um, a neurologist, uh, Franco Lopera, said of 12 interrelated families in Colombia whose members were experiencing Alzheimer's were often around the age 45. For most people, those dementias don't set in until age 65 or later. Uh, they soon learned that extended family members were uh, early onset dementia numbered in the thousands, and they were passing on this segment from one generation to the other. So if one patient has, or parent, has one particular gene mutation, there's a 50% chance that each of her children will have it too. Uh, those who inherit that gene will develop early onset Alzheimer's at the end. Uh, there's nothing we can do to stop it because... Um, if you have a strong uh, history, family history, um, you may, it may surprise you that you can develop Alzheimer's disease even if you can't think of one family member with this disease, even though that gene is present. So we're all at risk. Uh, remember uh, the statistics that we talked about a little bit ago. Uh, you have a 50% chance of developing Alzheimer's after the age 85, and most people are 
diagnosed with late onset uh, do not test for any known Alzheimer's disease because we never did this before. Uh, in addition to genetics, there are other factors that play a role in uh, determining your risk. Uh, Alzheimer's uh, may be a higher risk for people that have a past history of concussions uh, because of high blood pressure and other health problem because of your lifestyle. Um, no matter whether you trace it through several generations or family or not, it's not important to take steps. I, it is still important, I'm sorry, to take steps uh, to outsmart this disease. It's very common as we age, and so everyone's at risk. Um, protect your brain from dementia and stay sharp for life with the 75 plus tips, uh, which I didn't read because I didn't have time and you wouldn't have time and you wouldn't remember 75 tips. However, I think that um, uh, there's a lot to be said. Uh, the amount of money that healthcare is spending for dementia and Alzheimer's is incredible. And one of the reasons is our current health practices are um, keeping people alive longer. Um, we may not be in the best of shape. We may not be able to um, uh, run the four-minute mile or do what we used to do physically. But if we stay active phys physically, uh, we're going to lessen our chance of this disease uh, making us sedentary and maybe increase by another 50 percent. So um, we're uh, increasingly trying to get better about understanding Alzheimer's and uh, trying to get um, uh, as many people educated about things they can do to still be active to keep Alzheimer's from uh, taking over one's body. It's a nasty disease when uh, you go into a see a loved one and they don't know who you are and uh, it it kind of tears you apart especially if it's a lifelong partner or, or your parent or your husband or wife and that's part of what you have to deal with now to make you get older even faster uh, we're dealing with health care today and um, we thought with all of the evidence about drug prices being way too high and and uh, you experienced this and I, I just had I, just, I think I talked last week about a friend of mine a cousin uh, actually that was taking a drug for psoriatic um, uh, psoriasis and um, of plaque psoriasis and it was um, like a copay was $373 and that was for uh, a, a month's supply um, the good part about that is uh, it's working. And for the first time in 20-some years, um, they have a drug for this individual, which uh, in 12 days, it's doing its job. But that doesn't stop drug makers from raising prices. Uh, they didn't let up on price increases with the start of the new year. Um, and it kind of demonstrates the power in the face of criticisms of prescription costs in the United States. Pfizer, Amgen, Allergan, Horizon, uh, all others have raised prices for dozens of branded drugs since last December, and many of those increases are between 9% and 10%. Uh, we just had a, a gentleman yesterday, and his insurance had gone up so much, um, and he didn't want to pay it. The cost was $174 that he had to pay cash out of his pocket for a month's supply. Uh, now, it may have been that he hadn't met his deductible. Uh, I wasn't uh, waiting on the individual. I was in my office, and I, I heard. Uh, and, and that's a tremendous chunk of money to take out of your pocket to get a month's supply of medications. Um, many of these increases are between 9 and 10 percent, according to analysis. And uh, the increases are on list prices before any discounts or rebates. <coughs> The manufacturer sometimes provides, so some of the increases add thousands of dollars to the cost of already expensive drugs and come on top of repeated price hikes in recent years. Uh, Paul, you've heard me talk. I'm on a co-op board uh, that's located in Madison, Wisconsin. We have over 1,300 stores, and I have been <coughs> in board meetings over the phone uh, Sunday night from 5 o'clock in the afternoon till 8 o'clock at night. Tuesday night from 5 o'clock until 8 o'clock at night. Wednesday morning from 5 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock in the morning. And it's all negotiating with a wholesaler trying to get 
um, a cost of goods that's at a price we could afford. And um, I, I had to talk to somebody the other day about uh, our um, our current uh, regime in, in the White House and uh, defending our president. And uh, it doesn't make it, I, I happen to like the president, but I don't uh, like what he's done to health care. And yes, I'm sure that, that health care needed to be fixed. But how would you like to have a business where, uh, and my wife brought this up because this is what happened to us. Uh, if, if you were the provider of services to PG&E and you were giving them um, uh, equipment or keeping their trucks running or whatever it was, um, the, the government says you no longer can go to your store. If you were um, part of um, uh, the school system, you can get your prescriptions filled in town, but you no longer can go to North Lake Medical Pharmacy. If you're a member of the county, these are all people I support. You can get your prescriptions filled here in Lake County, but the county isn't going to support North Lake Pharmacy anymore. So you need to get your prescriptions filled someplace else to get the best price. If you're the school system, if you're the county, if you're a utility company, if you're uh, PG&E or the telephone or any of those things, that's what happened to my business in the last seven years. I can't fill prescriptions for my regular customers because, number one, I'm told what I can make on that prescription, and I'm not allowed to make what my chain competitors make. So I have to make even less to the point of losing money on prescriptions. If I can't get a rebate back from the wholesaler because they can't give me the price that they're giving uh, a, an entity that's my competitor, then I can't survive. So I'm spending a good deal of my time, and I'm on the board till um, uh, 2019, and I am fighting like crazy for uh, California I have the whole whole western part of the United States as my responsibility for uh, independent pharmacy. And, uh, and I'm working night and day after I leave the store to make sure I get a better price so we can survive uh, these costs. Uh, Vanda Pharmaceutical on January 1 raised the price of its new drug, uh, Hitalis, which treats a sleep disorder in blind people. You've seen it advertised uh, on television by 10%, now this is, a, this is a medication for blind people, $148,000 a year. Analysts say the price of the once daily capsule is now 76% higher when it was introduced in 2014. When I'm negotiating contracts with wholesalers and, um, and I'm it doing a three-year contract, uh, as part of my being on a board, you know, that take care of independent pharmacy, um, and I see something like this, uh, it makes my blood curdle because uh, here we are preying on a, a very small part of society that has limited income, probably governmental subsidy, and they've raised at 76% since 2014, and the company said it's within the price range of treatments that address similar size populations, knowing that fewer than 1,000 patients are taking the drug in the United States. That is criminal. Since New Year's Day, Pfizer has raised its prices an average of 10.6% for more than 60 branded products with annual sales of at least $10 million, according to the Dutch bank, for eight of the products went up at least 20%. They left prices unchanged for about 10 products. Pfizer, the biggest drug manufacturer in the country, who's going to be uh, phasing in with Allergan. A spokesman said the company offers considerable discounts on all these list prices, but guess who's giving the discount? They're taking it out of our reimbursement. Uh, in recent years, it's been common for drug companies to push the annual price increases, at least in single digits, around January 1st. Uh, in some cases, additional increases throughout the year, but this latest round of price six hikes is significant at the light of the political pressure. Politicians, health care payers, doctors and patients have criticized uh, during this recent months uh, medications are out of the reach for many patients. 
and straining health care budgets. Uh, U.S. prescription drug spending rose 12.2% in 2014, accelerating from 2013 to 2.4%. So Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, Marco Rubio, they've all attacked the drug prices and proposed various measures to rein them in. Um, the new increases, despite this criticism, signals there's are still pricing power. Um, when we would bring a drug on the market before, you with me, Paul? I'm here. When we would bring a drug on the market, uh, we would have, uh, that's when you would price it the highest. Because the price when you brought the market had all your, um, your history and, uh, and uh, evaluation and bringing the drug to market costs. And you would price it off that, not off sales. Now you price it off sales and that and you just keep raising it because this drug didn't uh was raised 60 76 percent because it didn't put uh you um it, it didn't have them making money and it uh, they had such a small amount of people taking the medication so they raised the price uh, drug makers are uh, say they need to raise prices as they fund uh, the research and um uh, another company accordia raised its drug um Ampria, which is used to help MS patients, by 11% on January 1st to an annual cost of more than 23650 This is something that paralyzes people, that put people in a wheelchair. And $24,000 for using it for one year. Uh, they offer rebates on those prices. Uh, it took more than a decade to develop it, and it's developing additional drugs for conditions uh, including Parkinson's disease. And guess what? Stores like independent pharmacies won't be able to uh, handle that because of um, uh, the rebate that we get compared to a specialty pharmacy. Uh, the price hikes are way out of ensuring that we can survive and develop these programs and bring new drugs to market. Uh, An Allergan, which we just said, is offered to uh, buy Pfizer for $160 billion dollars boosted prices by an average of 9.1% for more than 40 brands so far this year. And left this year, this is 2016, this increase included 9.9% uh, hikes for eye drugs, Restasis, which was already out of sight for price, second highest selling product after wrinkle remover Botox and the Mindia RX for Alzheimer's. So, uh, and when they called Allergan, they refused to comment. So. Uh, Horizon spokesman said that um, pricing for its products isn't a key driver of its business, and the company provides financial assistance to help patients afford its drugs, but not a lot of it. So uh, we're looking to, in the future, uh, getting more legislative action going with um, the uh, National Community Pharmacy Association and with um, the, the co-ops to uh, force these uh, company product lineup uh, to uh, cancel a lot of their planned price increases for the fourth quarter, uh, which we did, and we expect uh, for uh, future price um, products to be uh, less active uh, than they have been. So here we are uh, after all this uh, consumer watch and all this pressure and uh, knowing the administration is going out and a new one's coming in, uh, taking these risks. And uh, I would assume that uh, the Federal Trade Commission is going to allow the, uh, the joining of Allergan and uh, Pfizer to be the biggest drug manufacturer in the world. Um, they've let uh, Walgreens and Rite Aid become partners in becoming uh, the second biggest uh, drug chain and the first biggest drug chain in the world. Um, they let the AT&T and um, the, the cellular systems and the cable companies get bigger and fewer and fewer, and the, more, the less we have of those, um, the, the less competition we have, and your prices grow up. People, please understand this. If you think that uh, going to the polls is not worth it this year, and we've got a year to go, uh, pay a lot of attention to what's going on. <coughs> I'm not saying one side or the other, but take in consideration 
uh, what's going on in California, uh, what the cost of living here is now compared to uh, what it was a few years ago, what your taxes are, uh, bring up what changes have been in taxes in the last uh, year since 2016, how much more you're paying for income tax, how much more you're paying for inheritance tax, how much more you're paying for um, uh, death uh, assessment, how much more you're paying just for regular taxes, and, uh, and how your sales taxes have increased. Uh, that's all in additional to what things are going on the outside. Have you gone to the grocery store lately and bought a gallon of milk? Mm. Um, you do, Paul. You probably go through a lot. Oh of yeah, milk. yeah. I don't know what what is it now a gallon. Of sometimes milk. it depends. I mean, sometimes it's four, almost five bucks a gallon. Um, but you know, if you go to Safeway and get the lower quality milk, I guess <laughs> I don't know what you call it. You can yeah. get it for three and a half. But know, and I know three, eggs have gone from a buck ninety. Oh, eggs are to, ridiculous. I mean, yeah. The cheapest I think yep. is three forty nine or four ninety nine. Yeah, it'll be really went up. It'll be seven dollars <laughs> sometimes when you go in there. So, and then we throw, uh, those are to keep you from getting hungry. What we're trying to do is to keep you alive and give you a quality of life. And we're battering all, uh, battling all these things on uh, the outside. Uh, I want you to think, you know, I, I do this show. I, I pay to do this show. This is, an, and this is an advertisement that costs me money. But I think it's worth it to speak to the public and, and speak in terms that you can understand. And not only do I talk about what's going on with health care, but I talk about what we offer you as a pharmacy, as North Lake Medical Pharmacy. Uh, one of the ads I'm just going to cut today is, uh, for example, you went to your doctor today and you got a prescription sent to the, the pharmacy and uh, you, you didn't feel good enough to pick it up. Now, what do you do? Um, if it's our pharmacy, what you do is call us um, the day that you were at the doctor's office and that happened and say, would you mind delivering it? Um, and, uh, and I'll talk more about when I get back from the Happy Island about uh, uh, benefits that North Lake Medical Pharmacy gives you. So we want to remind you we're North Lake Medical Pharmacy with two locations for you at 5136 Hill Road East across from Center Lakeside Hospital. Call us there at 263-6192 and uh, across from Bruno Shop Smart at uh, 347 Lakeport Boulevard. Give us a call there at 263-1328. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Bill. We'll see you back here next week for Health Talk on AM 1270 and 96.5 FM KXBX.